Ravel's 1967 Plymouth GT Hardtop. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello, Mopar fans. Welcome back to another Monster Hobbies What's in the Box, where today we're going to be looking at Ravel's 1967 Plymouth GTX Hemi. I said hardtop in the intro. I meant to say Hemi, because Hemi and just Hemi. All right. So now that that's taken care of, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends and family. Hemi! Let's get this thing to Hemi up to 100, because 100 likes, because this thing could easily go 100 miles an hour, more than easily go 100 kilometers an hour, which is, <laughs> anyway, let's see what's in the Plymouth showroom as we unbox this great kit right now. Plymouth is out to win you over for 1967, and that couldn't be more apparent in the Belvedere, which added GTX muscle models with standard 440 cubic inch V8s. However, the hot guys got even hotter by dropping in the 426 Hemi into their Plymouth, which of course was a factory option, but a rare one. You can see on the front of the box here, you got the two nice scoops on the car hood. Very cool looking. So this kit came out in 1994 by Ravel Monogram and again was in one of those great series of model kits released at the time that was competing with Tamiya, AMT and Lindbergh for best well-designed model as well of course as Monogram. So let's just tilt this lid up here so we can enjoy the box for all its glory wants to pop open on me so I better hold it here. Detail features famous muscle car that earned the nickname of the boss long before the Mustang. <laughs> anyway, detailed engine compartment with 426 cubic inch Hemi engine plus heater hoses, water bottle, battery and much more. Molded in light metallic blue, plated and clear. So we get a bit of a color change with this actually matches the color on the box on this side. So as you can see there's the undercarriage and this is using the subframe with the torsion bar front suspension. And as we move this over you also get the engine block. You can see how nice this is. This is a well-built kit by the manufacturer. You see the Hemi in there and the, the uh, Cryco battery and everything. Let me just take that back a little. Tilt up the box end, of course, looks much like the top of the box. They usually do. <laughs> now, here we get the top, <clears throat> top down photograph, front three quarters. And as we move this over, we get the rear of the car. You can see it's quite a nice model. Skill level two, I believe. So, glue and paint required. Now, tilt up to the back end again. And now let's just open the lid and see what's inside. So here we have our instruction sheet. And this time around I did not write on the top of this where I got it and whatnot. Okay, the decals down below. Then we've got the body. Look at this uh, nice metallic blue this is molded in. Really pretty cool, pretty color. So we'll take a look at that in a minute. We've got two chrome trees going on here. And then we've got the old promotional material at the time, showing you which models are coming up next. The glass. And then Parts tree number one, which got the interior components on it. Part tree number two is a frame undercarriage. Number three would be our suspension components and whatnot. And then we have all the hood and underhood details, as well as a top of dashboard. And then interior panels and engine blocks battery and whatnot. We've got our rear tail lights and our tires. 
So let me clear this out of the way and we'll start looking at the instruction sheet. And here's our Plymouth instruction sheet. And again, it's got a photograph of the built-up model, as well as the history of it. And then down here, it's got all the color callouts. Flat black, satin black, orange, aluminum, copper, and steel. And of course, our infamous read this before you begin. So now let's just open this up. Of course, it opens like the book, going this way. The pictures are quite large on this one, so going to be nice to zoom in just a little and see what we got. So of course here's our Chrysler 426 Hemi going together. Very popular engine in all these uh, Chrysler cars. So we've got our engine block going together, left and right hand side. The cylinder heads popping on top with of course our hemispherical valve covers going on there. I actually had a Hemi in a 73 Toyota that I owned, a four-cylinder Hemi. Anyway, there's our manifold and the carburetors going on the top of that, as well as our front engine cover and our oil pan. And they're saying to paint them orange, which would be, of course, Hemi engine orange. And then panel two, we have our air cleaner going in, and then our ignition coil, the distributor up at the front, the right and left exhaust headers and the starter motor. The alternator does have a bracket on it, which is a nice touch. The pulley assembly and the fan. And now this is quite a huge panel coming up here. And I actually need to zoom out the camera. All right, the technical aspects of our video here. Zoom in, zoom out, eh? Take off. <laughs> okay. Body assembly inside a body with windows in place. And then, yeah, so it's showing the glass going in. And you do get the little dome light in here, which is a nice touch, as well as a rear view mirror. And then there's glass being shown going into the body. You got your firewall in here, the master cylinder, and the wiper motor. And I do believe the Mopars, the inside of them is um, body color. I have to look at my hot rod magazines again. Then my muscle car, Mopar muscle car magazines. Pedals, they're all satin black. You've got your gas, your brake, your clutch, and your parking brake, which is nice. Not all of them have the parking brake, brake in there. And then we've got our radiator support with the horn, the um, radiator itself, and the radiator shroud all going together into the body. Now take a look at the interior, step number three. So there's no real reason for the instructions to be having such huge pictures, but glad they're there anyway. Now this is nice again because it's got the separate left and right door panels, as opposed to being molded in the tub like in the uh, Oldsmobile uh, Hearst Olds that we had in the last week. <clears throat> there's our ornament going in between the seats here. And uh, the only thing that is molded in place is, of course, the rear bench, or pseudo-bucket seats. This would be a cushion in here as well. There we have our console, as well as tachometer and the floor shifter. You paint that little boot there, flat black. And then we go down here into this side of it. You got a, a two-part dashboard, which again allows you to paint all the instruments up in here on that side it and then put your top on so you're not trying to reach in there with your brush. The steering column and our th three spoke steering wheel. It's kind of hard to tell in the instructions here. The front seat halves going into the back seat halves and then they drop in so you get your nice interior that way. And then we get into step four right here which shows the chassis assembly details. So your battery drops in and your washer bottle the completed engine will hook in. You got a steering gear on your steering column. It shows you how to align it there. And then your interior and your body, everything drops down onto the chassis. It's interesting you're actually doing the suspension components last in this model. Then we have our heater hoses, an upper radiator hose, lower radiator hose, and our exhaust, which is molded as one piece instead of two separate components. Then we 
go into panel five here. Panel five shows all the suspension going in. So there you've got your entire uh, torsion bar type suspension going in the front with the front stabilizer bar. The wheels will pop on here. You do not glue them. They are a snap fit. You got front shock absorbers also getting in here up underneath. Then our drive shaft going into our differential in the back here, as well as a differential with the long leaf springs and the rear shock absorbers, the wheels going together, wheels and tires. And then here there's a decal that goes around. It's our red, red line stripe. And then here we've got the rear bumper assembly going in. You've got a gas cap pops on the side and then your rear bumper rear tail lights and some clear lights pop in for your backup light lenses license plate sitting here and then panel 7 is showing the front end assembly with the hood and the hood hinges these are operational they've got a little hook in the back then our left and right hand scoops plus the hood trim the front grill and then what's this little guy here the striker plate for your hood your hood latch Always a nice feature to have in these, makes them more realistic. Separate door handles, hooray, you don't have to drill anything in. The uh, windshield wipers, the side view mirror, and then our front bumper with the turn signals that are clear and a license plate. And then what's on the back here? Haha, -ha. full size Plymouth GTX um, decal lo location chart. Wow, so you got your stripes going on there, and then your 426 GTX license plate. Again, specific license plate, not a generic, which I'd prefer the generic, because then you could put it in any town, any city. And then here it's got um, 67 Plymouth color and trim combinations. Standard satellite and GTX two-door hardtop and convertible vinyl bucket seats. So here it tells you all this stuff. It actually has a paint coat on here, uh, PGB blue, PGR red, PGK copper, and all the rest. So if you want to find these, try looking in your paint store for uh, Chrysler colors. They even have like the dark green metallic here is GG1, dark copper HH1, you know, and then it'll tell you, okay, uh, the interior trim and color code was PGP or blue right and then the basic car color would be buffalo silver metallic so it would have it here you know and there different colors and then where it's blank they never had that color interior combination so very nice instructions by Ravel and now let's look at those plastic components here we have our body for our Plymouth GTX and as you can see it's molded in this nice light metallic blue. It almost kind of blends in with the grey mat here. There is a section here that you need to remove out of the body. That's just to help brace the front fenders so they don't like come in in the cooling process. Uh, once I pull this off the mold, <clears throat> there you can see the nice attention to detail. You got a script right up there in the front fender, as well as one right here, where my thumb is, actually here. <laughs> and then the depression portion for that gas cap, the chrome gas cap. The uh, lower rocker molding is molded on the body, so you need some bare metal foil across there, as well as up on the Plymouth roof and no drafts, front windshield. There's uh, the vent right there. And then our inner fender aprons. Again, very crisp detailing on this. Very nice in the mold process. Underneath, there are quite a few mold marks in that roof, as you can see. Uh, you need to address those. But remember this one in the center here. Whoops, I'm looking at from my end. This one right here in the center, don't remove that because that's your indication of where that dome light goes in. So keep that in mind when you're getting these ones down with your number 16 hobby blade. So anyway, again, very nice detailed crisp body in that nice metallic blue.
Next up we have the frame and chassis, and in these years Plymouth was experimenting with unibody construction and subframes. So here we have the subframe coming up, it goes across here, these little ends are the rear mountings for the torsion bars, and then we've got the strong frame coming out here, that's into the rocker panels, and then the subframe for the rear coming in here and the floor pan is molded in it's all one piece right and you can see the nice detail work on the fuel cell and whatnot going back here and all the rest so let's just bring this up into the camera eye here see nice crisp detail deep detail very nice in the center there right there we have a manufacturer mark so it would say Ravel you could try to scrape that off or, you know, just leave it because uh, your, your differential will cover it over. Now, underneath here, I do believe that's painted body color. Again, I need to uh, refresh myself in my, my literature. Not any mold marks under here. There are these little funny sunken cups, but they should be all right. Um, but anyway, getting back to that. I do believe the whole body is painted uh, all the way around and then anything on here would be over spray coming off the sides if I remember if that's the correct thing but regardless this is a quite a nice plastic piece our next parts tree is of course all the components that would go on that frame and we've got well the fan belt won't go on the frame but <laughs> Here's our differential here with the multi-piece rear axle as well as the front suspension with the torsion bar springs and then our cross member. And there we've got our radiator hose and the pedals for the floor. I'll just bring this up to the camera so you can see. Quite crisp detail again. Very nice on monograms or Ravel's portion of this and then a front suspension and here you can see how the wheels would clip in so they go in the hole and then these expand and you won't be able to get the wheel off so make sure this is all correct before you uh, plug it together remember there will be a seam lines around these hubs so that's what you want to clear up when you build this thing so that you'll be able to uh, pop your wheels on have them rotate not too bad on the mold mark side. A couple little ones back here. Again, your number 16 hobby blade is your friend. Some in here. Just smooth it all out before you start putting parts together in case some of these little things uh, interfere with the fit and finish. So there we go, another great sprue. Now our next part tree has multiple parts. We have the hood and of course components for under the hood. There's those nice springs, hood springs. And then we've got our fan belt and the horn and the master cylinder and I do believe that's a coil. There's a firewall and the radiator support as well as our drive shaft. There's our exhaust pipes. We've got two of the wheel backs and the top of the dashboard. So let's bring this up to the camera again. I'm going to turn this over so we can see the nice work on the uh, firewall and see all the components for it very nice as well as it's got the uh, cutouts for your hood hinge and then the rad support there are again your mold marks on this side of it all so you'll have to use your number 16 hobby blade and then under the hood we've got these nice details there is a circle here interesting sunken circle um, then we've got locations for the hood hinges and there are a couple of those uh, mold marks in there it does have a little micro detail of the fireproof matting again not too bad and then there's our dashboard top with the heater vent sitting in there for defrosting the front window and uh, again very nice detail on these parts our next parts tree is again a multiple component part tree. There are some under hood bits, there are some hood bits, as well as the engine block and interior components. 
And again, these are molded separately on our interior, which is nice because the door handles will actually look like door handles. This one is a GM handle. I don't have a Chrysler handle, but uh, that's the beauty of doing it this way instead of it just being a soft little blob. The other nice part is you could use bare metal foil on this without being inhibited trying to drop it down the side of an interior tub, which I've done before. It's difficult. There's our cylinder heads, the front engine cover. The oil filter on Chrysler's are pointing out to the front. I did have a 38, yeah, 318 Plymouth Fury 76 once in my life. <laughs> the starter motor, that's the um, hood latch brace. There is our intake manifold, the steering, part of the bumper I believe, uh, distributor, oil pan, our engine block with the transmission on it, the scoops for the hood, the exhaust manifolds, uh, heater hose, battery, and of course the wheel backs. Let's bring this up to the camera so we can bask in the beauty of the detail. Look at that, nice and crisp. The armrest, you could actually put your arm on and rest on it. <laughs> that looks very nice. And then we got our battery in there and the manifold, all kinds of cool stuff. There's those little sugar scoops on the front. Underneath, um, some mold marks, but the interior panels will be hidden in the body. They won't interfere. Interesting that uh, they molded the engine block with these wide open, the cylinder, but they will fit in those little tabs for your Hemi. Anyway, again, some more excellent detailing on this Revell model kit. And our last components of the blue plastic pieces are the interior components as well as our radiator and support and some shock absorbers, a rad hose, the rear shock absorbers. Okay, so the steering wheel is a three spoke with the horn ring right here. The, this is kind of typical of the uh, Plymouth. I'm remembering the Johan police kits had steering wheels like this. Then we've got our front buckets with the bucket backs, the rear seat, it's molded in nice detail. We've got carpet on there and our beautiful looking dashboard. At least the bottom portion of the dashboard. The top is on the other parts tree. So let's just take a look at this. Let's start with the dash. You can see the nice detail in there. This is why they uh, molded the top, left the top off, so you could actually get in here and paint. Although it's interesting that they didn't mold this, but it's still. Nice big glove box in here, unlike the uh, 67 Oldsmobile, which just had enough for a map in your gloves. <laughs> Some glasses. You got this in here. Um, okay, there's our seat. And again, look at the nice crisp detail in here. Ooh, that sound. And then your uh, chrome piece would be go in here between the seats. And then you got the rubber mat on the floor to uh, protect where the pedals are, because there's a lot of action there from your feet wearing through the carpet, which happens anyway. <laughs> the fan shroud and the radiator, nice detail on that. There's that steering wheel. And then the seat backs, with all their detail, and the seats themselves. So again, excellent work. Not much, checking for the mold marks, looks pretty decent. Okay, so that concludes our blue pieces. Let's check out the other color plastic bits. So now we get to my most favorite part of all the model kits, which of course is the chrome. But here it's interesting. It looks like they, uh, you get two parts trees in the chrome, but it looks like they've cut it at the factory for some reason. There really wasn't any reason to cut this because it would fit in the box. However, <clears throat> you get a hood trim the front grill, which again would be uh, get a black wash going in there. Then the rear bumper, or the front bumper, pardon me, and the rear bumper with a nice Plymouth detail across the back. The uh, Hemi heads here. <clears throat> There's the chrome for the center seats, the carburetor, the license plates, the alternator, gas cap. I'm not sure what that is. There's your door handles. Windshield wiper blades, rear view mirror, shifter lever, um, some details here. 
having a hard time seeing it over here. There's the center console. It's entirely chrome. I do believe you'd have to paint the sides and then have the chrome on the top, but again, need the reference. There's the cool looking wheels. Kind of similar to the Buick style, actually. And then we have our Hemi air cleaner. So let's bring these up to the camera. Just slip that to the side for now. You can see the nice crisp detail in that grill. Again, a very beautiful pieces here. And the Hemi heads, they actually have that uh, texture to them. And they have the exposed spark plugs. So if you're going to wire your engine block, you of course would drill right through these all eight holes and then put it into the correct firing order on your distributor. I used to do that. It was quite, uh, quite a chore. <laughs> There's the Cryco alternator. And again, nice bracket on there. You can see the chrome on this side looks a little more frosted than uh, on the other. A little hard to tell with my camera here. But the chrome on that side is very nice. And now let's take a look at the second part of this. Okay, so there's that center console there. And then our wheels. And I do believe you need to paint inside a little bit. And then that air cleaner with the uh, dual screws for the two carburetors going down underneath it. There's your windshield wipers and all the rest of the great bits. So again, very nice chrome work for this model. And here we have our clear components, and there are a lot, and a lot of really tiny ones, because you've got your uh, your backup lights and turn signals. And then there's a dome light, molded in clear, which is nice. So you just have to be careful around the edge, paint a little silver on the edges. you got your headlights, and again, remember that that waffle pattern on there is going uh, horizontal and vertical. Don't get it at an angle. And then there's our windshield wiper bottle, windshield fluid bottle, which is nice that they molded in clear, so it actually looks like the real thing. You get your front window with the sun visors, which is always nice, the side rear glass, and the rear window. And if you have some uh, evergreen clear sheet styrene, you could actually put in the front window glass rolled up. And then here we have our tail lights, of course. So let's just give this a quick up into the camera you can see the nice crisp detail very nice that uh, water bottle will be nice to do up you can paint the bottom with Tamiya clear blue make it look like fluids in it and then we have our little tail lights which have the uh, sort of body roll hook onto it which go around in that bumper there so very nice stuff again Nice, crisp, and clear. And here's where the rubber meets the road with these great Goodyear Polyglass GT tires, which are molded on this web here. So you're going to have to take a sharp hobby knife and cut them off very carefully. And then you can spin your tires in your drill. I'm using this little socket here that I've got for a cordless drill. Which of course, would pop right in the center there. <laughs> and... Uh, you can put that in the drill and then hold it up to a thing of sandpaper and sand the tread down. These are very nicely molded tires, although the Goodyear lettering is a little bit soft. There, you can see it in the camera there. And they have some nice good tread detail as well. So again, some really cool tires. Not sure if these are new for the model kit themselves, but they are a nice addition. Last but not least, we have our decal sheet which has some Illinois 426 GTX license plates sitting here. The red walls for the red wall tires are 426 Hemi decal. There's also a little white decal here for an under the hood feature. And last on the sheet is our black stripes for the body and hood. So very simplistic de decals, very plain but they will give your model that extra little feature that it needs. And that completes our review of the Ravel 1967 Plymouth GTX Hemi. Have any of you out there built this thing before? If so, let us know how you enjoyed it in the comment section down below. Well, I hope you enjoyed this amazing model kit review as we open up the lid on our 1967 Plymouth GTX Hemi. 
by Ravel. And if you love these great unboxing videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a video, you are the first to know about it. And next week, our 1967 series will continue with yet another amazing car. And I know that you don't want to miss that. So until then, happy driving. <laughs>